these are the baby goldfish in my tank. Still very, very young. Surprisingly, this, that one, this one right there by the heater. There's also another one. Same size as that one. I, I just can't find them. I just can't find them. I don't even know if it's a boy or a girl, a male or female. But uh, there's actually a few baby goldfish in here. I let the fish spawn in the big tank that I have. And I let them release some eggs in there. Until oh, I could tell there's more than a half of the eggs that have been released. And I released the other half in this tank, I think. And then after that, I made sure to fertilize the eggs in this tank. The reason for that is because I didn't want too many babies. I don't know what I would do with so much babies. But yeah, with these ones so long, hopefully all of them survive. So far, I haven't had one die on me. And I change the water every day, by the way. Feed them at least twice to four times a day. And then I already have people that I'm going to give them to as soon as they're good to go. I'm not even going to sell them. I'm just going to give them away. Uh, by the way, I saw this experiment one time on this other guy's channel where he planted a sweet potato in his tank. I've had mine now for about 12 hours in the tank. The reason I planted this one is because my female goldfish will always eat the roots of my pothos plants and my spider plants. I, I have them right here hanging. So these roots are not growing as fast as they should because this big female keeps eating them all the time. So I hope she will be distracted by the roots from this plant as soon as they start showing. And here's my avocado plant that I've actually had quite for a while. This avocado almost died on me because during propagation, I forgot to take it out of the plastic zip bag that I had it in. Also, by the way, I'm um, recording from South Africa. And being a fish keeper in South Africa is not that easy because we have something called load shedding. And at some point, we lose electricity for some hours per day. And sometimes more than once a day, a minimum of two hours a day. So it's not easy to not have electricity. Some of us, we do have generators, but as you should know, um, gasoline and diesel are expensive in South Africa because of this war between Russia and Ukraine. Yeah, but anyway, these fish are still spawning. I don't understand how, because those babies belong to her and him. So I don't understand how can these fish be spawning. And the water is cold, by the way. There's no heater in here. There's definitely no heater. And it's winter in South Africa. It's really cold in the night. In the day, it's probably about 21 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know what that is in American temperatures. I'll, I'll have to Google it and convert whatsoever. But yeah... How do I get her to stop eating the roots? Because I feed her. I feed her about, about three times a day. And she is big. She's big. The reason she seems a little bit small is because this is a big tank. That's a really big tank. She's, she's really, really big. And she's so far from the glass, but look at the size. Yeah. But yeah, how do I get her to stop eating the roots? Because I really want my pothos to grow. By the way, these rocks are natural rocks. I didn't buy these from an aquarium store. I just collected them from a river somewhere. From a stream. Look at this. This happens all day. It's been happening now for about two weeks. I know she's probably stressed. I'm sure you can see the eggs being released right now. Some of them are even floating down. Yep. 
and that's why the water looks a little bit cloudy i changed this water about two days ago but because now they are chasing each other this water is going to look like this all the time how do i get them to stop because i even hand handled her and extracted the eggs released them i let them eat the eggs and then i changed the water to make sure the eggs do not rot in the water or they don't mess the water up so let me know if you know something